If this is real, probably won't want to put it in the store. I want to bring it home. If I want to keep them, I mean, I can't get pawn shop stuff like this every day. I mean, I got a, I got a spot all cleared out on the wall for them. Go back to the frame shop and get it back. This is one of those few things that I would buy off a customer that I would not put it in my showcase. I'd bring it home. I've definitely never seen anything like this. This is crazy. Man, you showed me something I've never seen before. I got to say, this is a first. I've never actually seen anything like this. Honestly, tell you, I've never had a giant Pinocchio marionette brought in my store ever. Oh, that's a pretty cool year, man. Finally won World Series in 95. Buffalo Bills of the 90s. My wife and I were moving to Vietnam, hoping to get 13,000. So where'd you get it? A buddy of mine, he needed the money and Was Turner the staff member? He was the owner. Yeah, Ted Turner. No one really liked him. <laughs> the design was pretty basic, but by the 1970s, got flashier with lots and lots of diamonds. These things can go for a lot of money. But it's crucial to get a professional appraisal. Every ring is different, so getting the price right can be tricky. You mind if I have a buddy come down and take a look at it? How come? What, what, I'd like to get the money and get out of here. Might come in and tell you it's worth a little bit more. Let me give him a call. What concerns do you have? with the ring. It's a staff ring. What do you think it might be worth? We have a large diamond, 18 smaller diamonds surrounding it. On the inside, we should see the Jossens logo. This isn't even a staff ring. This is what they call a salesman sample. See if they like it, approve it. Ted Turner's not a guy to hock his ring or sell it to come up with a few quick bucks. You're looking at around two grand. The customer is disappointed with the offer, hoping for $10,000, but getting much less. I would offer you around $800 for it. And I'll, I'll just take it home. Thank you. All right. And I'm not bringing any more rings into this shop. A man enters the shop with an item he has no clue about, so Rick hits up an expert friend to take a look at it. I got these crutches here that I wanted to kind of check out. They have like a pistol on them. How would you offer these things? I have no clue. I have a buddy who will know all about this stuff. Don't touch them, Joe. The expert explains how the gun works. <laughs> they look late 18th. He doesn't know anything about them. That's right. why we called you down here. <laughs> they are flintlock. Oh, now yeah. this screw looks like an existing pair of crutches. You would have it here. It would be loaded. Kind of bring it up and... Oh, that is so cool! Before suggesting any price for the guns, the expert decides to test the shooting abilities of the crutches. So what do you think it's worth? I'd really like to test fire them. Let's do it. Are we ready to fire these things? Any volunteers for firing them? That's why I'm here. Gotta be good at something. That one's ready. All right, you ready, chum? I'm gonna need that raise. Woo! <laughs> Got her, mate. That's how it's done. <laughs> Pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, so, um... After the shooting test, Rick asks for the expert's opinion on the price of the crutches. What do you think they're worth? It's hard to value that you haven't seen another one. I think at the right auction, 25,000 for it. <laughs> the negotiation begins. Alex said 25 racks. I want 25 racks. So I'll give you 10 grand. Let's go 20. I'll be, I'll be fair with you. I'll give you 13 grand. 15. I'll risk it at 15. Yeah. I have this. Are you a stamp collector? They do appear to be very valuable. The owner thinks they are worth a lot, given how different they look from the stamps we use now. They're extremely old. They're definitely unique. Not like the stamps that we use today. I feel like they're worth some value, but how old they are. Chum calls in an expert to check who explains how awesome these stamps are. How much are you looking to get for it? $250. If you have a few minutes, call my buddy and he knows the value of all this kind of stuff. It could be worth a lot of money. Interesting. For general use by the British. Yeah, this one says America. This is wonderful. An important stamp. What kind of value would you put on it? I think to any advanced collector, $1,000 item. Awesome. I'm working with $1,000 now. Would you take $450? What are you thinking? $650. $600? I don't think so. I really want to show them to my boss, so I'm going to make a deal. $650. That's more than I was looking for, and that's awesome. Chumley greets a man who is at the shop to sell a gold bar. Uh, I got a gold bar. Hey, Pops, you wanna come look at this? Chumley calls Rick over to check the item out. Where in the world did you get this? Cleaning things out, and uh, we found this thing. Maybe it's sell it, get some money, and... What do you think, Pops? It's a big chunk of gold. $24,000 worth of gold here. You know real gold when you see it. The weird thing about it is the markings on it right here. What the XX means, I have no idea. Rick starts discussing the item with the owner. So what's the deal with this white stuff on there? Called investment. It's like plaster of Paris. Crustaceans like this in it, it'll flake right out with your fingernail. I mean, it looks like shipwreck stuff. You mean like buried treasure? It could be, yeah. I buy gold from people every day but I never have gold bars from a shipwreck walking to my shop. It might be worth way more. What do you want to do with this? You want to sell it? Yeah, I want to sell it. I would like someone to take a look at it. This could be off a ship just because of this right here. As always, Rick calls an expert to the shop to further examine the gold bar. These particular stamps I recognize from the 1500s. Even at that time, gold was evaluated 24 scale. So you think it's off a ship? Well, what you have is definitely coral and crustacean attach itself to something harder to grow. This thing was underwater for a long time. This is definitely 
definitely shipwreck treasure. There are two sites. One is from the coast of Texas, 1554. So there's a site in the Northern Caribbean. So how much do you think it's worth? Milk times two. That's what you're talking about, Jeff. What does that mean? The expert suggests a price for the bar. When I said $24,000 in scrap, scrap is melt. It's just like a trade term. Worth $48,000? In that neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> there's probably not a lot of people out there willing to buy this thing. The people that are, are willing to spend a lot of money. A lot. So now that we know, what do you want to do? I still want to sell it. And how much would you like for it? The negotiation begins, and the deal settles shortly after. Well, if it's worth 48, I want 48. We're talking different languages at the moment. 44? They're going to charge me 20%. I'll go like $32,000. Give me more than that. It's worth 48. I'll give you $35,000. Cash money. All right. 35000 Let's go do some paperwork. It was a lot more than I expected. And Shane's still here for you to check out? Where did you get this? At a yard sale? Thousands of years to figure out how to make alcohol. Everybody was happy. <laughs> Rick tells the owner about the item's history and how making moonshine was illegal. Moonshine is not a drink. It sort of got that name. Illegal whiskey during Prohibition make their whiskey illegally in the moonshine. Moonshining was is a dangerous line of work. The first 20% that comes out of a still can be poisonous, so I'm assuming it doesn't work. No. How much do you want for it? A $750. The negotiation begins. No. It has to be taken apart, rebuilt all inside. I'll give you 100 bucks for it. I can do 500 I can't do 500 If it was in decent shape, 250 No. 100 50 bucks. Give me a deal. Bought it for 50 bucks. It's a pretty good return. A man brings in a very fascinating piece of American history. Success. I mean, uh, what's your best price? Very, very best price I would do, uh, 25,000. So we got a deal at 24? Um, if you're buying it for yourself, I would sell it for the 24,000. Hey, sweet, we got a deal. I'll okay. bring them both with you. Okay. I just won't tell my wife about it. Okay, I mean, I give you four because it, it does take a long time to sell it. Okay, awesome. All right. And he's gonna pay her in $100 bills. A lady has brought a huge bone to the pawn shop, which leaves Rick speechless. Um, got my attention. Just know that it's a dinosaur bone. A big dinosaur? In the 1800s, there was really big animals. Rick asks for an offer. How much do you want for this thing? 40000 It's pretty uh, old. This bone right here, and cast the rest of it in plaster. A lot of times, they're not all complete. Sometimes only that might be real dinosaur. Let me get someone down here. To... An expert is called to the shop to take a look at the bone. This is a Marasaurus, long neck dinosaur, the quadrupedal dinosaur, uh, walked on four legs. That definitely feels like a cast toe. These metacarpals, these are real. So that's great. The dead giveaway is if we can see any cell structure. That looks like calcite. This is definitely real. Look at the humerus. Look at that. Definitely legit. The expert suggests a price upon Rick's asking, and the deal proceeds. What do these things go for? 25000 What do you think of that? What do you take for it? What about $21,000? i will give you fifteen grand for it. How about twenty? dollars give you 18000 That's my top dollar. Sold. Sweet. I just bought a dinosaur leg. The repeat customer of Rick walks in with a grenade. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Scott? What's going on, Rick? I got you a grenade. Get that thing out of my store. I took it apart before I brought it in. How do you put it together? That's what I don't remember. <laughs> Rick looks at the grenade. Well, there's no uh, boomy stuff inside of it. <laughs> It's not every day that someone walks into my shop with a grenade. I consider that a good thing. So what do you know about it? It was either made by the OSS or the CIA 60 years ago. I've never seen a design like this. Looks like it'd be easy to throw, though. It's EKC means Eastman Kodak Company. Wow. Rick calls in an expert. Wow. Everything that comes in that is unusual or strange or old, they call me. The expert talks about the surprising history of the grenade. It is a grenade that was made for the OSS. It was the forerunner to CIA. This is James Bond stuff here. Old school James Bond. They made it look like a baseball because they figured that every American boy can throw a baseball. This would normally be filled with TNT. Screws on this like that. Okay. And then this goes in like this. 43 people were injured during the testing. Three people died. How much did you pay? Five dollars. Five American dollars. Yeah. Okay. Rick, the last time I saw one of these, 2007. And it sold for over over $2,000. Yeah, you did way good. Who's the man now, Rick? Apparently you are. This thing is beyond cool. Definitely want the damn thing. The buyer and Rick negotiate and come to a deal. So how much do you want for it? I'm thinking 16 now. I want to leave you a little money to make in it. So yeah, 16. You can do that. All right. Let's go write it up. Sounds good. I'm psyched I got this grenade. It was designed by a secret government organization. It doesn't get any cooler than this. Rick is with Corey to pick up an item he bought some time ago. I bought amazing Gulf oil sign. I had it shipped to get restored. Pretty amazing, huh? It's big, man. Where are we going to put it? Ask Rick if I got a great deal. Are these things collectible? What'd you pay for this? 1500 for the sign. No, he stole. Less than $3,000.
Dale explains the amount of repair work this item is going to take to make it more collectible. Rip the frame up. The frame's gonna have to be re-welded. How much do you think it's gonna be? 10,000. What if I put some neon on it? That'd probably be too expensive. Corey wonders how much he can make off the garage sign after it gets an upgrade. Do you want to do the dark blue? Whatever you think's gold. You're the guy. Okay. Look at this thing. Literally found a holy grail of garage sites. How much do you think I can get for it? With the pole lit up? 25 grand. Ark of the Covenant. Okay. Look at this thing. I am a genius. So I get $25,000 on it. The sign is finally fixed, and Rick and Corey are amazed by how good it looks. What's up, Rick? I can't wait to show you. <laughs> so, yeah, what do you think? Don't make stuff like that. Remember how it was? So now you've got two sides. An original on that side. Then we're going to look at the other side. The blue. Holiday. That's incredible, dude. How much can I get? $2,700. How you do this kind of stuff? You never, ever disappoint. All right, I'll get you paid. Right. Uh, take care of it. Absolutely amazing. I will get $25,000 for this after I put it on the internet. As my kids would say, this is lit. Corey and Rick make a trip to downtown LV to check out a military Mercedes. The Mercedes Unimog. Yeah, I thought it was a car. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to get something like $22,000 for it. It was a model called the Radio Box. The Germans used to hide in the wood listening to the Russians. It was very, very versatile. These trucks are really cool. It's meant to be off-road. They are originally designed to be used on farms. The seller shows the engine of the vehicle to Rick. Later, an expert is called over to figure out the price of this Mercedes. <laughs> And it's an old Mercedes motor, but it looks in good shape. I don't see any leaks. The Unimogs are cool. It can drive through anything. Figuring out a price is going to be tricky. OK, you ready to buy it? Depends on how much you want for it. Rick Test drives the Mercedes Unimog alongside the expert. I would like to get 22000 I got to figure out what this thing's worth. I get someone down here, and let's go from there, all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to buy this thing. Everything really worked as it should on this vehicle. So is there a market for these things? It's not like a, you know, a market for a Harley Davidson or something. Rick asks for the expert's opinion on the price of the item. 17000 maybe 18000 I would classify this one as nicer. It should go for more than that. So how much were you looking to get out of it? Twenty two. Put a lot of money into it. But it's not an easy sell. I can give you fifteen grand today. You walk away and it's done. I'd take eighteen right now, my bottom line. Uh, I'm the one taking all the risks. I'll do sixteen thousand. Sixteen five, I think. I think I can make a deal. 16,000, that's what I could do. Okay, we have a deal. All right. I cannot wait to show this to the old man. <laughs> Customer brought a master copy of JFK's assassination evidence tape to the pawn shop. Rick brings Mark to check if the items are legit. The guy in the shop with what he claimed original microfilm from the Dallas Police Department's report on the assassination of JFK. He's coming by to take a look at this, and hopefully it's not just another conspiracy. <laughs> So these are the micro film of the police report from Dallas on the JFK assassination. It was a monumental moment in history. You know, after the Kennedy assassination, the Dallas PD started investigating it. They had missed the fact he was enough of a lunatic that he was going to kill the president. They didn't want that to come out. These are the master negative copy. Microfilm it was a great way of making copies of a large mass of paper, making it available. Problem with microfilm, if you put it through the machines, they would get scraped. After a while, possible to read some of what was on it. One way that we could see these are in a master negative, I would have to look in a microfilm reader. Are you cool with that? I'm cool with it. Let's go from there. They're in the masters. They'll be really high quality. OK. Sounds like a plan. Sounds great. Mark takes the seller to the public library, where they find out the documents are real. Here we go. Look at this, guys. I'm just trying to find out who actually shot him. <laughs> About four months ago, a call from an FBI agent. Conspiracy <laughs> stuff right there. <laughs> this is the sort of thing where I guess this is like what they took from uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Italian 6.5 rifle, live round 6.5 shell. The actual evidence. There it is right there. Yeah, it's master copy. And probably all of this is publicly available online. Unfortunately, the seller demands a lot, and Rick has to let go of the tape. All right, so I'd give you a grand for it. I don't even know if I'd be able to sell it. Yeah, I mean, what's your bottom number? I can do 10 grand. Two grand for it, that'd be like... Yeah, I can't do two grand. It's amazing that I got to see this. I wasn't going to let it go for 2,000. Corey is greeted by a woman at the shop who wants to sell a peculiar pottery duck. What do we have? Pottery duck from Colima, Mexico. All right, a uh, pop. You know anything about ducks from Colima, Mexico? A little bit. You liked rubber duckies when you were a kid. He had a blast with them when he was like three. 
The seller wants to get rid of the paranormal duck. I got the duck from antique shop in Scottsdale, Arizona. Ever since then, weird things happening around the house, falling around the duck. So that's why I'm looking to sell it. I'm asking $4,000 for the duck. It does have magic powers. Rick takes a closer look at the item and asks for a price. You can still see it was in the kiln. It went into a kiln like this, and it came out with those beautiful finishes on it. I mean, I mean, that's how beautiful they did it. How much are you looking to get out of this? About $4,000. Um, it could be very, very old. Incredible condition, which is kind of scary. Any place you go in Mexico, there's like counterfeit versions of stuff like this. I'd like someone to look at it. Eventually, an expert is called in, and the item is evaluated further. What's up, Bob? How you doing? That is quite the duck. 2,000 years ago, they made animals go into a tomb, and they'd lay the body, place these animals around. All of the animals they would put in the tomb had a function. Most of them were to be eaten in the afterlife, and this form, very rare. So what's it worth? It's stunning. 8,000. Okay. You're not going to whip out your x-ray machine or anything on it? It's got all the signs you want to see. So you want 4,000 for it? Rick brings out Alex to check if the revolver this guy is offering is worth the money as he's claiming it to be. The percussion revolving pistol. It looks like something that was built during the Civil War as an army contract, maybe. So I've called in Alex. He'll actually know what he's talking about. Alex removes the revolver's grip and shows the serial and model number, proving it is real. I know absolutely nothing about this. It's Civil War-ish. It's a pretty good game. Yes. It's a Savage and North figure eight revolver, model 1856, pre-Civil War. Savage and North is in Middletown, Connecticut. This was an attempt to create a rapid fire revolver. It just looks like a terrible design to me. When you pull the ring trigger back, it cocks it, and you get a much faster rate of fire. This, the very first model, second variation. The serial numbers for these grip frames, if it doesn't have it going to impact the price, you can see there's a serial number 29. So that's a good thing. It's a really nice Nice, rare gun. How much are you asking for it? 10,000. That's a little on the high end. We should do to try to fire it. And if it can function, and the range is not far off from what you were asking, depending on how it performs. They take it to the range and test it out. The gun works fantastically. Now it's time for the price. If it fails, this won't be as high a value. Well, let's hope it shoots. So full cock, and here we go. That's one. That's indexing okay. Four, five. One more. Five out of six? 7,500 is really, I think, the limit. So, um, what do you want? How about seven? No, how about four? Five. Four. It's a really cool gun. It will take a while. There's a very limited number of customers out there looking for this. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 4,100 bucks. 4,100 today? Today? All right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 4,100. Right. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right. So here, you take this. Okay. You take it back to the pawn shop. It's not the 10,000 I was asking for. I'm going to take this $4,100 and go get me a new truck. A man with fancy boots comes into the shop. Hey, how's it going? Those are some fancy boots. And that's a fancy piece of wood. We have a pistol grown into a tree. 1858 Remington. If you're in the Civil War, this was a great thing to have. You know, you got one shot and it's done. I mean, if you, you were carrying around two of these, you got 12 shots. Carried one of these with you, there's a lot better chance you'd live. Rick asks a few questions regarding the item and takes a closer look. Is it loaded? Supposedly, there is a bullet in the chamber. Bob White. That one's empty. Can I take it out of this? No, I've never taken it out. And... Yeah, that's loaded. The one in the chamber, you're never going to be able to figure out. I've definitely never seen anything like this. What in the world is it worth? I want $18,000. The expert checks the gun and is amazed by it. This is crazy. There's just a million things with this. We have no idea what's going on. This is a Remington New Model Army. Uh, they made them roughly from 1862 to 1875. It wasn't for the Colt fire that destroyed the factory, this gun probably wouldn't have been produced in as great a quantity as it was. I can't figure out a price on this thing. I don't know. There's nothing else like it. It's one of a kind. You're buying the chance to talk about this gun. It's just, I'll World's tell you what I'd pay period. for it. I'd pay three or $4,000, no problem. Man, you showed me something I've never seen before. Rick negotiates on the price. This is one of those few things that I would buy off a customer that I would not put it in my showcase. I'd bring it home. I'd give you $4,000 for it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna pour myself an adult beverage and sit around and uh, tell stories about it. Uh, if you change your mind, I, I don't know why it's so, I know it's, we take five. No. I mean, what would you take? 15. It's really cool to talk about for five grand, not for 15. 
A man walks in with a Mastodon tusk to sell. I have a Mastodon tusk I want to sell today. Where did you get a Mastodon tusk? 40 years ago, my great-grandfather was on a dig in Florida, found it. He was an archaeologist. I got to say, this is a first. I've never actually seen anything like this. It looks really damn old, I'll tell you that. It could be a Mastodon tusk or a woolly mammoth. A lot of people thought that they got extinct because of the Ice Age, but they went through hundreds of Ice Ages. I've never seen these lines going like this way in ivory. The customer can't wait for an expert. Um, can I call somebody to check this out? No, I really don't have time. I need to get to work, man. All right. How much are you looking to get out of it? I'd like to get 800. I mean, my problem is I don't know exactly what I'm buying. It gives me the vibe of being really old, but I don't know. Can you take 400 bucks for it? Let's just get this done at 550. I'll give you 500 bucks. No way I can get 550 for this. If I knew what I was buying, maybe, but no. 500 is good. All right, let's go up front. We got to do some paperwork. All right, thanks. An expert comes in to check if it's legit. Well, it's definitely authentic fossil ivory. Okay. My estimation is this is probably anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 years old. It definitely has age. You've got a very nice specimen, but it's not an elephant relative at all. Fossil walrus tusk. It's the left tusk. Okay. You can see by the curvature and how it's down toward the center. So how much did you pay for it? I paid 500 bucks for it. In this instance, I think you've done all right. Fossil walrus ivory is sold for carving. This has a very large market. The value on, on this ivory has gone up to over four to $500 a pound now. So uh, this feels like it's in there anywhere from three to four pounds. You know, this is, this is going to be twelve to $1,500. Hey, I did good. Thanks, man. You're the best. You're more than welcome. The owner of a signed Led Zeppelin album comes into the shop to sell it. Led Zeppelin one signed by the full band. By the full band. I only see one. Jimmy Page signed the front, and on the rear, John Bonham, Robert Plant, John Paul Jones. Led Zeppelin is one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. Now, four signatures on an album, if this is real, probably won't want to put it in the store. I want to bring it home. So how much do you want for this? 22000 This is the holy grail to Led Zeppelin items. We got Jimmy Page on the wrong side. But you're not going to find something like this. Let me call up my friend and take a sure. look at it. Of course. The expert comes in to check if it's real. The greatest rock band of all time. Yes, they are. If the signatures are good, if everything checks out, there's no doubt this is going to end up being one of the rarest items I'm ever going to see. So the first thing I'm going to do, Rick, is look at it under magnification right there, ballpoint pen. And you take a look right here, oxidized. It's a little older, you could tell. Nice aged ink. So we know we've got live ink on here. That's a great sign. He had this big R, and then the rest would just become all a big flow. John Paul Jones, probably the nicest signature in the band. The last one I want to take a look at, the Jimmy Page. And it's just all over the board, but I love this slow and spontaneity. Okay, so it's all legit. Absolutely no doubt this is the real deal. What do you think it's worth? Right at about ten to $12,000. Okay. The owner gets angry with Rick's buddy after he gives a lowball appraisal. Way off. <laughs> the reason why Jimmy didn't follow suit with the other three is because this was his baby, this album. Was Absolutely. On the front. Exactly. I'm not, no, I'm not no, actually no, no, discounting no, 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 any no, no, of that stuff. Right. One second. I would tell you this much, that if you told that to the average person, they're not going to care. They want them all on the back. I would give you eight grand for it. My best price would be seventeen five. You know, okay. I appreciate the offer. Okay, well, if you change your mind, come back. The offer's open. Have a nice day. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank, Thank you. They really need people that know what the hell they're talking about. I know what the f talking about. This guy is an ass. A customer comes in with an exploding die pack. I've got an exploding die pack from the uh, bank. One thousand dollars, ten dollar bills. And how did you get this? A buddy of mine's in banking. Bank robbing? No, okay. he's just, he just runs the bank. So they walk out the building. There's a little set-off strip right at the door. Okay. After they go out, they're supposed to go off 10 seconds. It's exploding die pack. It gets all over their clothes, all over their hands, all over the other money. Rendered useless. They can't use it anymore. They actually make a pack now with transmitter in it. Even if you get a few blocks from the bank, they can just keep on following you all over town. And I guess they're actual $10 bills they cut apart. I'm assuming it's legal to buy this die pack. Rick asks for an offer and calls in an expert to learn more about the Item. How much you want for it? I'd like 500. Well, these things were developed back in the 1990s. If you were being robbed, you were supposed to slip it in with all the other bills. It would blow out this ink that dyed your skin. It dyed the bill, dyed everything. When that thing goes off, you're either blue or red or whatever color. So is all the money. Are they legal to own? Yeah, you're fine with them. <laughs> we're actually not made by the Federal Reserve. They were made by a private company. What you have here is a curiosity. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Rick negotiates the price. How much do you want for him? 473. Were you dreaming when you came up with that number? When you end up in a three, 473, you end it with a smile. I'm not smiling. I will give you 100 bucks for it. How about 300 bucks? I'll give you 150 bucks. $200. I'll tell you what, I'll go 175. I won't go a penny more. Okay. All right. 
Write them up, chum. Right. A guy walks in with a collection of pawn shop movie posters. The biggest collection of pawn shop movie posters you'll ever see. All of them one of a kind. Someone should make a movie about us, Rick. Came down to the pawn shop today to sell my vintage pawn movie posters. Damn, this one's huge. It's called Unclaimed Goods. It was written by the guy who wrote uh, Zorro a few years later. Pawn shop politics. In old silent movies, it was just as common for someone to walk into a pawn shop as it is for someone to walk into a bank today. You know, all in all, they're in pretty damn good shape. You see the three balls right there? Yeah. The way you identified a pawn shop was three balls oh, hanging out. Oh, yeah, front. yeah. What do you want to do, pawn or sell them? I think I'll sell them. Rick makes a deal for vintage pawn shop movie posters that would look perfect in the shops. How much you want for them? These two each are about 550. The big one and this one would be about 450. So you want two grand? Yeah. I'll give you a thousand bucks. For all four? For all four. I'd let you have, have them for a thousand bucks so I take this one out and keep it. No, no, no. Probably the best I could do for you would be around 1600. 1400? 1500 we have a deal. It's a deal, man. All right. They're going to look amazing in my store. Rick sends Corey and Chum to frame the posters. Since he's too lazy to go get them framed himself, he's sending me and Chum instead. We've been framing stuff for the guys from, for the last few years. Now, these are nice guys. You don't usually see this anymore. I love the vintage stuff. So what do you guys have in mind for these today? Typical museum glass, black wood frame. So what are you thinking it's going to cost me on these? All four, you're probably looking about, uh, about 1200 bucks. About 1200 This is the side of the business that most people just don't think about. All right, let's do it. All right, sounds good. Do you have any idea what you're going to sell them for? Probably in the range of 1000 to 2000 apiece. Okay. Selling them seems to be a better idea for the guys. Well, uh, the framing would be about 1200 You think you'd be able to work something out for me? Mm, you'd be framing less, so I'll do a 1500 for it. 1500 Yeah, I don't think we could sell them yet. Rick likes these. I don't care if he likes them. Okay, I could probably do 1500 Deal, David. All right, sounds good, man. This couldn't have worked out better. We had free framing and cash on top. Where's the other one? Pawn shop politics. Uh, I'm about to do it. A framer fell in love with one. I sold it to him for 1500 bucks. And, of course... That leaves Rick infuriated. We broke even already. I want to keep them. I mean, I can't get pawn shop stuff like this every day. I'm calling bull here. We're in the business to make money, and that's exactly what I did. Put something else next to it. No, go back to the frame shop and get it back. I can't win around this joint, dude. This guy comes in with three Pinocchio marionettes. Okay, we have some Pinocchios. I have three of them, originally made by Bob Baker marionettes for the Disney company. Honestly, tell you, I've never had a giant Pinocchio marionette brought in my store ever. Well, let me show you here real quick. Most of these have been sitting in the boxes in my closet. Of course, there you do your little walk. It looks like a rap star or something walking around with his pants sagging. This is the best I can do with it. How much did you want for them? They're saying that these things are worth 10000 to 100000 Wow. Not having enough knowledge, Rick calls in an expert. That is neat. This is an exact replica of what the animators would have used back in the late 30s to animate for the movie. So what are your concerns, Rick, about the pieces? Basically what they're worth. These are some really neat pieces. These came out of the Bob Baker studio. Do you have some paperwork, too? For one of them, number 55. OK. Well, it's 100% that these are licensed pieces. I would put a value on each piece about six thousand a piece he makes negotiations on the price all right so how much you want for it? Fourteen thousand? there's no way it's gonna take a while to sell them i'll give you nine grand for them would you do ten <laughs> what do you think nine thousand sounds a lot better than ten how about 95 that's cash i think we got a deal all right deal a guy brings in a tiara belonging to former first lady ida mckinley I brought in a diamond tiara that belonged to First Lady Ida McKinley. He thinks it's worth $75,000. So I called up my buddy Greg check this thing out. The diamonds are, are fine quality for the period. The expert checks the quality of the diamond. The idea that this was convertible and has the fittings, it, it's seen in this official White House First Lady photograph. This is one of the events that was going on at the McKinley Museum. It's featured there. What would it go in your store? In a retail store like Fred Layton, we would see this piece sell for $75,000. Sort of what he's wanting, so yeah. we're going to have to talk a little bit, but uh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. A suit worn by the United States' first president is presented in front of Rick. Warren. So is this George Washington's too? It is. He's a pretty fit guy. No, he was 6'2", but he wasn't a really large man. If I could go back and have a cup of coffee with just about anybody in history, it would probably be this guy. To me, he's one of the most amazing men in history. He really is. So where'd you get it? It was passed down from family member to family member. Rick seems to like it. 
Do we know the date on this thing? I think it's from the 1750s or 60s. Well, Washington was always very aware of how he presented himself. On a piece like this, what it's dependent on is provenance. They're missing pieces, that oh, sort sure. of thing. So you enticed me with a sword that's not for sale, and this thing right here, does it have a price on it? How do you think Rick reacts to the price? Well, it's one of my highlights of my collection, but everything has a price. So how much? Uh, I wouldn't sell for less than three million dollars. That's a lot of money. I don't think I'd ever say this, but I'm actually considering this. I'm going to go think and contemplate about this for a little bit. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Rick returns to the hotel to discuss the price. I'm ready to sit down and have a serious conversation with $100,000 for the Paul Revere spoons and $3 million for George Washington's suit. The suit. You asked for $3 million, right. but what's the best you can do? 1.5? No, I, I appreciate your offer, but it's really a major part of my collection. How about $2 million? The best price, absolute best price would be two and a half million. Okay, and you're firm at that? Absolutely firm. Okay, well, I guess the suit's out then. I didn't get the suit, but you know what? It didn't fit me anyway. A man walks in with a painting that could be worth millions. What do we have here? It's a Claude Monet painting. Where in the hell did you get this? Uh, collateral for a loan. The guy just defaulted on the loan, or? No, actually, he took the money, went to the hospital, and died. Do you have a date or anything else like that when it was done, when it was painted? I don't. I mean, was this, was this guy really well off? He was. He, he was a doctor. He started arguably one of the biggest art movements ever, the Impressionist movement. Hmm. That's why his paintings are worth so much money. They were a little bit blurry. That's Impressionism. But you could still see detail and depth, and that's why they go for millions and millions of dollars. Rick raises concerns and asks questions to confirm if it's real. What I have here is some documentation. Uh, May 1st, 1965, our findings as as follows. The painting is solidly constructed, casual canvas, a typical Claude Monet. The painting was actually displayed at the Las Vegas Museum of Fine Art. This was the insurance policy for that painting, and it was insured at that time at $2.1 million. So you want to sell it, correct? Correct. So let me get a friend down here. Okay. If this is legit, I think we can both make money off it. As Rick is not qualified to determine its authenticity, he calls in an expert to investigate further. 